Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're here for this bike right here and man, it's been good to me. Honestly, I can't believe it's already been a year. It's been a super strange one for the world, but at least this time last year, I was putting this bad boy together, getting the goat ready for some trail riding, happy as shit, other than my wife getting mad at me for doing it in the living room. It was still an awesome day. So how has this bike been for the last year? And honestly, it's been really, really good. I got a few things that I haven't talked about in previous videos that I figured would be great for this review. Mainly gonna focus on suspension and kind of some of the changes I've done recently with it to kind of make it feel a little bit better on the trail. In fact, uh, provide considerably more confidence, which made the bike obviously better for me. And then go over some of the components, at least with the wear and tear that I put on the bike so far and how they're holding up. If you're new to the channel and you haven't watched some of those previous videos up here on the top right, so you can watch like my first month, my sixth month, uh, upgrades I've done to the bike, the SX derailleur failure that I kind of swapped out, and then how to torque all the frame bearings on the bike. And of course, at the end of the video, I'll put a clickable link so that you can get all of the capper videos I made. So let's get started. The first topic to talk about is going to be suspension. Aside from my skill level, I think it's been the main thing that's been holding me back on this bike, keeping me from progressing faster, at least faster than I'd like to anyway. I think if I had spent maybe a little more time at the beginning initially dialing it in, or at least understanding how the suspension works and dialing it in properly before I started riding it, I probably would have had a much better time with the bike throughout the year and probably progressed a little bit faster than I have. Sadly, you just don't know what you don't know. So what initially clued me on to the suspension not being correct was I got to ride with Tony from the outside our MTB. I had to pick his brain while we were climbing and he had just got the new Capra Elite. And while we were climbing and talking, he had mentioned something about when he first got it, you know, he was pogoing, his feet were kind of coming off the pedals and he had to kind of figure out how to dial that in. And, and obviously he's got it going well now, but for whatever reason, just those kind of two terms, the way he had, had mentioned them, they really clicked in the back of my mind of what I kind of needed to do for the Capra, how I could move it forward and, you know, progress with it. And my initial failure point with the suspension was thinking I needed to be at 20 to 25% sag. I later found out that the RockShock Yari and the Super Deluxe shock in the back, they're both debonair. And debonair should be sitting at a 30% sag, plus or minus 5%, depending on your riding style and interest. I also think I spent entirely too much time and energy on knowing what PSI the fork and shock is. At this point, I honestly don't know and I don't really care, as long as I have the 30% sag. Now, if I was gonna do some maintenance on the bike, take the fork or shock apart, okay, I might shove the pump back on there, see kind of where, what specific PSI I'm at so that I can put it back quickly before I dial it back in and get my 30%, but keep in mind that they might not be the best settings for you. I'm mainly basing my settings off of what I've researched and of course the train I ride. I don't get to ride a lot of flow trails and jumps and stuff like that. Everything I have is rocky jank, so kind of is what it is for me. And honestly, until I started messing with my forks and shocks, I thought I only wanted to ride flow and jumps until I started dialing it in and I actually love jank. After you get the 30% sag, at that point, the rebound compression and dampening are things that you would mess with for the trail you're gonna ride for that day. Another thing with the front fork is gonna be the insert. There's actually a upgraded debonair insert and Tanner Schreiber, sorry if I'm slaughtering your name here, he brought that up to me a while back and I started doing a little bit of research on it and I definitely have that loss of 10% sag. Essentially, Rockstock sells a 2021 insert that will give you the top 10% of your fork travel back, make your fork ride a little bit higher in its travel. The insert costs just about 50 bucks or you could actually buy the pieces and swap your insert out into the newer insert by just changing out a few pieces for roughly like 20 bucks. I'm honestly not sure when I'm gonna do this. I'm thinking I might go with the charger kit and bring kit. Um, when I finally do get that stuff, I'll go ahead and make a video on it and you can see how it's done and see if there's any difference. See if I can feel any difference or even care the difference. But on a good note, Tanner also just recently got his Capra and he said it did come with a new upgrade. So depending on when you bought your bike, it's gonna be depending on whether or not your bike comes with that upgrade or not. Obviously I bought mine in January last year that was fresh of 2020 and I don't know when they changed up the new fork, maybe May-ish time frame. Kind of dumb that they threw out a, a 2021 upgrade in the middle of the year. But if you want to know if yours needs that or not, you can go ahead and ride it around for a little bit. Get off the bike. Uh, you'll see kind of where your sag comes back up to and you should be able to grab the top of the bike and the fork and if you could pull it that 10 to 15 percent sag back out of the bike, you know that you probably have the old ones. If that interests you or that's something that you want to mess with, you know, you can do your research. Uh, maybe if enough of you say, I want that video, then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and buy this stuff and do it. Because at some point, I'm obviously going to have to service the fork. And if I have to service the fork, take it all apart, I'm just going to go all the way and probably do everything in it. So uh, I'll probably do both upgrades. So now that the suspension stuff's out of the way, I'd like to go back to the SRAM SX components on the bike. Honestly, obviously they're very cheap. They're very tacky. Um, they've held out really good throughout the year. I've beat the crap out of them. I've put a lot of uh, miles on them. I put a lot of use on them. It's not like I'm a nice guy when I ride up hills, I'll shift gears and sometimes. I don't baby them is what I'm trying to say. So ultimately for being cheap, SX 
FX components, they've held up really well. Other than, of course, the rear derailleur, I'll put the video up, the link's up in the description there if you wanna check it out. Uh, you can see the issues I had with that and why I swapped it out so quickly. Uh, but the rest of the components on the SX, the, the chain, the freaking rear cassette, the, the front chain ring, the cranks themselves, the shifter, everything's held up pretty damn well. So I can't complain about that. The next one would be the brakes. The base model comes with the Guide REs, which is not the cheapest version of brakes, and they're still holding up really well. They still feel fantastic. I haven't bled them throughout the year. My front pads are still good. My rear pads are ready to be replaced. I already have pads for it. I'm just kind of waiting until they're 100% ready to go, but the feel is still fantastic in them, and I definitely don't feel like I need to be bleeding the brakes or anything like that. They're still doing a great job. The next one would be probably this Postman. Like, I don't know if it's a cheap, you know, whatever YT uses, whatever, whatever Postman is. I don't even know what company that is, if YT owns them or what, but that's a year of, of carrying my 200 and some pound ass uh, worth its weight in gold. Honestly, it's it's a great post. Uh, I've got absolutely no complaints about it. Uh, obviously the lever for it is super cheap, but it still works. It's still getting the job done. Maybe at some point I'll put a better one on there, but ultimately I don't really hop on swapping things out unless they completely suck or they break. For the most part, for being an in inexpensive base bike, everything on this bike is still holding up really, really well. And the last thing I'd have to say would be the tires. The tires are holding up well. They're the Maxxis uh, Minion DHRs. They put the DHRs front and rear and they're still doing fine. The front's in perfect shape. The back is starting to lose a little bit of chunks here and there, but ultimately it's still in good shape. I've only swapped out the sealant once throughout the year and I'm still not getting any leaks. Still doing pretty good. Definitely due to put in some more sealant. I'll probably do that here in the next couple weeks, but I mean the tires are doing great. So I'd say that pretty much wraps up what I'd have to talk about on the bike throughout the one year I've had it. I really don't see myself buying another bike right now. I'd say the only thing I'd change really at this point is I wish I would have bought a 29er and the reason why is because I don't have the option of riding where I want to ride. I bought this bike because I wanted to be playful, poppy, and corner well. I don't really have flow trails. It's all rocky jank. The more rocky jank you have, the bigger the wheels you have, the better, the better chance you have. The faster rolling you're going to go over those rocks, the safer it's going to be getting over those rocks, honestly. So for me and the terrain I ride, I think a 29er would be better, but that's just the terrain I have. Other than that, I'd like to thank all of you guys for all your comments and telling me about your new bikes. I really enjoyed meeting all of you guys and sharing experiences on different upgrades that you want to do or you have done to your bike. Tons of people have bought this bike and told me about it. Uh, and I've had a blast meeting you guys and BSing with you guys about it. So hopefully, hopefully we continue out through next year because it's been a hell of a fun outlet for me through 2020. Let's make 2021 even better. So thanks for watching. And if you're new to this channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next week.